So this new blood test for irritable bowel syndrome is about 20 years in the making, maybe even longer. If you think about back in the 90s, there was just this beginning emergence of a notion that food poisoning could lead to chronic illness and particularly irritable bowel syndrome. In those days, food poisonings like Salmonella, E. coli, Campylobacter, Shigella were, were found to be associated with the development of IBS months later. But it wasn't until the last two decades that we started to really piece this together. One of the things that was really important was the large outbreaks that had happened in various parts of the world, and they found that IBS was in fact developing. And then the term became post-infectious IBS. But remember, IBS at that time was really about stress, anxiety, psychological trauma it was the cause of IBS. So it was a big phase shift to think that food poisoning could be a cause of IBS. Over the last 15 years, we've been working on trying to understand how that food poisoning and those early studies link to the pathophysiology of IBS. In particular, what we started to do was develop animal models. One of the animal models was giving Campylobacter, which is the number one cause of food poisoning in the United States, to animals, and they developed irritable bowel syndrome. So this was the first true animal model of post-infectious IBS using a common pathogen in humans. But what we found from that animal model led to this test. We found that a particular protein called cytolethal distending toxin and the B component, or CDTB, was particularly important for the IBS phenotype to develop. And of course, there's a lot of experimentation around all the steps that were necessary to prove this, but we proved that CDTB all by itself could precipitate IBS in these animal studies. But why? Was CDTB a toxin? Was it a toxin that was damaging the nerves of the gut? What we eventually found was that CDTB isn't really causing a toxic effect in the way we think. What it was doing it was it was similar in sequence, in protein sequence, to a protein that humans, and in this case rats, had. And that protein is vinculin. The interesting part of vinculin is vinculin is a very important protein that helps nerves interconnect, helps them move towards each other and then stick together. Without vinculin, you can't develop a really intact nervous system. So what we saw in this animal work is that the animals developed antibodies to CDTB after food poisoning, and they developed antibodies to vinculin as well, just with only seeing CDTB. We took that concept and brought it to humans and said, could we actually diagnose IBS using these antibodies that are measured in the serum? And we did a 3,000 patient study almost 2,300 IBS patients, inflammatory bowel disease patients, celiac patients, and healthy controls. And sure enough, these antibodies separated patients' IBS from other diarrhea conditions. So it's the first blood test that says if you have a patient in your office with diarrhea, you can tell who has irritable bowel syndrome using the measurement of anti-CDTB and antivinculin. So in essence, this is a game changer because for the first time, IBS becomes a diagnosis of inclusion. For decades, we've been doing excessive testing, colonoscopies, and CAT scans, ultrasounds to try and figure out why the patient's complaining so much, and then eventually everything's negative, and we settle on using a criteria that this is irritable bowel syndrome. But what if in two days, you can know a patient has IBS using this test? And this test has over 90% specificity for CDTB and for vinculin separately. So it's able to tell you with great certainty that your patient has IBS and you don't need to do all those unnecessary testing. Plus it gives the patient reassurance that they truly have a condition and that IBS is organic. But remember, not everybody with IBS is post-infectious IBS. We do believe now that approximately 60% of the diarrhea and mixed IBS have these antibodies. So there is still a group of patients who have IBS that don't test positive. But for those who do, those 60%, it's a game changer.